Hello, third graders, Mrs. Hales here for art class. Today, we're gonna to be reading a book called The Umbrella Queen. After I read the book to you, I'm gonna show you how to make an umbrella. And then we're gonna turn our umbrellas into color wheels. Let's get started. The Umbrella Queen by Sheeran Yim Bridges, illustrated by Taeyeon Yu. High in the hills of Thailand, there is a village where everyone does the same thing. The same thing the people in the village have been doing for hundreds of years, making umbrellas. Big umbrellas, small umbrellas, paper umbrellas, silk umbrellas, red, blue, yellow, pink, and green umbrellas. All of them painted with flowers and butterflies by the women and girls of the village. Every New Year's Day, the woman who has painted the most beautiful umbrella is chosen as the Umbrella Queen, and she leads all the villagers in a big umbrella parade. A little girl named Newt took part in these parades, walking behind older girls who were proudly carrying the umbrellas they'd painted. How Newt wished she had an umbrella of her own. When can I paint umbrellas? she asked her mother. Newt already knew how the umbrellas were made. She had watched her father fit thin strips of wood and bamboo together to make the umbrella frames. She'd helped her grandmother make paper to cover the umbrellas with. But what Newt really wanted to do is what her mother did. She wanted to paint the umbrellas. Please let me try painting. I promise I'll be careful, said Newt. Newt's mother was working in the garden. Freshly painted umbrellas were propped open around her like huge flowers. Very well, Newt, her mother said, giving her an umbrella. Paint on your umbrella what I'm painting on mine. Newt's mother painted a flower. Newt painted a flower. Newt's mother painted some leaves and vines. Newt carefully painted leaves and vines. Newt's mother painted two butterflies fluttering around the flowers. Newt painted two butterflies fluttering around the flowers. That's very good, Newt, said her mother, impressed. Let's show Fa our umbrellas. They put the two umbrellas in front of Newt's father. Newt's grandmother joined them. They all looked from one umbrella to the other. Why, you can hardly tell the difference, Newt's grandmother said. Newt's father gave his daughter a big hug with a little practice, Newt. You'll be a great umbrella painter. The next day, Newt's mother gave her five umbrellas that were ready to be painted. Here's a finished one, Newt, so you'll remember what to paint, said her mother. Then her grandmother gave her a very own set of paints and brushes. Finally, her father helped her carry all her things to a spot that she'd picked out in the corner of the garden. Newt sat in the sunshine and started to paint. First she painted the butterflies, then she was going to paint the flowers, leaves, and vines, but something made her change her mind. She painted an elephant chasing the butterflies instead. Around the rim of the umbrella, the little elephant chased butterflies. On her second umbrella, the butterflies had flown away. Instead, the little elephant left alone was practicing handstands. He did a handstand and then he fell down and then he got up and he tried again. On Newt's third umbrella, the little elephant was joined by another. The two elephants ran around and around, squirting each other with water through their trunks. On the fourth umbrella, a whole string of elephants walked happily, trunk to tail. And on the last umbrella, the elephants had fun being silly. What are you doing? asked Newt's mother, not very pleased. You're supposed to be painting flowers and butterflies. Newt smiled, but I like elephants, she said. I'm sorry, Newt, said her father. You must paint flowers and butterflies. Yes, Fa, said Newt, trying not to hide her disappointment. She knew all the umbrellas that her family made were sold to the village shop, which sold nothing but flower and butterfly umbrellas. Painting umbrellas wasn't just for fun. It was work to help feed the family. So every day for the rest of the year, Newt worked hard painting flowers and butterflies. In the evenings, when the air rang with the laughter of children playing hide-and-seek in the street, Newt gathered up leftover scraps of bamboo and mulberry paper and made tiny doll-sized umbrellas. And these umbrellas 
she painted with elephants and arranged proudly on her windowsill. Before long, it was time to prepare for the New Year celebrations, including the Umbrella Parade. For the first time that anyone could remember, the king was going to be spending the New Year holiday in his winter palace nearby Newt's house. The village council had taken the bold step of inviting the king to come to the village this year to choose the Umbrella Queen. Every day, all day long, the women laughed and chatted while they worked in their gardens. They talked about whether the king would accept the invitation. Every evening, the men gathered under the big tree in the middle of the village and talked about the same thing. Then, one morning, two weeks before New Year's Day, the noise outside Newt's window woke her up. The whole village was shouting and laughing and calling out to one another. Newt scrambled out of bed to see what was going on. She could hardly believe it. The king had written to say he was coming to choose the Umbrella Queen. On the big day, all the families gave their houses a final cleaning and laid their best umbrellas out by the gates, open so that the painted flowers and butterflies faced the road. The king and the village councillors walked down the road, inspecting the umbrellas one by one. Finally, the king stopped in front of Newt's house. He looked carefully at the umbrellas by the gate. These are very beautiful umbrellas, he said to Newt's mother, who bowed deeply but kept her eyes respectfully cast down towards the ground. The king looked down the road to make sure that this was his last house. All the villagers had now gathered a respectful distance behind him. Turning to them and smiling, he straightened his back to make his announcement. But as he did, something caught his eye. What are those? He asked and stepped forward to take a closer look. Newt's mother almost fainted to see the king peering through a window into her house. Who painted these strange umbrellas? Asked the king. A murmur went through the crowd as they noticed the tiny umbrellas clustered along the windowsill. Look, exclaimed the king, they're covered with tiny little elephants. Did you paint these umbrellas? The king asked Newt, guessing from her red ears that she had. Yes, your majesty, replied Newt, bowing deeply. What is your name? Newt, your majesty. Why such tiny umbrellas? The big umbrellas are only for flowers and butterflies, replied Newt, keeping her eyes down. Hmm, said the king, and what's wrong with flowers and butterflies? Why do you need to paint elephants? Well, Newt stuttered, wondering how she would explain herself. She frowned, and she forgot to keep her eyes on the ground. She looked straight up and was surprised to see the king's friendly smile. Well, I like elephants, she said. The king laughed. Ladies and gentlemen, the king said kindly, taking Newt's hand and turning around to address the rest of the village. Because she paints from her heart, I am choosing Newt as this year's Umbrella Queen. The end. Supplies you will need today include white paper, 9 by 12 pencil, and crayons. If you'd like to have something round to trace, like a lid, a paper plate, or a roll of tape, that would be fine. I used an old sewing tin lid that I had around my house. Now you need to divide your circle up into six equal parts. How am I going to do that, Miss Hales? First, you make a line dividing your circle in half. Then you want to divide each half into thirds, so three equal parts. Then you want to connect those lines from one half of the circle to the bottom half of the circle, and then you'll have six equal pieces of pie or equal parts. Now you've made your umbrella. It's kind of a bird's eye view of your umbrella. Now I'm gonna put some designs in the middle of my umbrella because sometimes they're kind of fancy at the top in the middle. And then I'm gonna draw some images from the book. I'm gonna draw an elephant, I'm gonna draw some flowers, and I'm also going to draw a butterfly. I'm going to be inspired by some of the images and pictures that I saw in the book. You can be inspired by something else, or you can be inspired by the book. If you play baseball, you can put baseball images on your color wheel. 
I want you to make this color wheel your own. Just be careful not to cover up all the spaces with images and pictures. We have to save room for the color. So we're gonna color this just like we would color a real color wheel that has six colors. To review, a six color color wheel has the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And in between those colors, it has the secondary colors, orange, green, and purple or violet. That's the kind of color wheel that we're making today. While I'm coloring my color wheel, I don't want to color in all of my pictures that I drew. I want them to stand out or contrast with the color. So I'm going to leave some of my little images and pictures white. I think that'll be a nice way for the images and pictures to contrast. Another thing that I did was I picked all of the red colors that I liked from my crayon box. I used three different reds in my red section, and I used three different yellows in my yellow section, and so on. Do you remember your art teacher talking about the elements of art last year? The what, Miss Hales? The elements of art. Line, color, shape, form, space, value, and texture. These elements of art give us vocabulary words that we can use to describe or talk about works of art. I think of the elements of art as being the, like the ingredients in a cake. What elements of art do you think we're using in our umbrella color wheel project? Well, I think we're using line because we drew images. We're definitely using color. We're using space because the images that you drew and your color wheel sections take up space. And we're also using shape because the images you drew are shapes. Now it's time for you to get started making your own umbrella color wheel. Remember, start with a large circle and then divide it into six equal sections or pieces. Have fun. 